Our opening hymn is number 972, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to one and all. Today we are celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday. Today's celebration is meant to remind us that the greatest thing that we can know in life are not the sins that we commit, but rather God's love and mercy. As we gather now to celebrate these sacred mysteries of our redemption, let us pause for a moment, calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who hear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord has this been done it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the Lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it
a reading from the letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. 
Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus well, good morning, everyone. Today we continue our celebration of Easter. This Sunday has become known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Saint Faustina was a Polish nun who received visions from Jesus, including one of Jesus wearing a white garment with beams of red and white coming from his heart, which came to be known as the image of divine mercy. She wrote in her diary that Jesus said, I want the image to be solemnly blessed on the first Sunday after Easter and I want it to be venerated publicly so that every soul may know about it. My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the font of my mercy. Divine Mercy Sunday focuses on the gift of mercy and love given through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. As Saint John Paul II stated, divine mercy reaches human beings through the heart of Christ crucified. Pope Benedict XVI said, Mercy is the central nucleus of the gospel message. It is the very name of God, the face with which he revealed himself in the Old Covenant and is fully revealed in Jesus Christ, the incarnation of creative and redemptive love. From Pope Francis, everything is revealed in mercy. Everything is resolved in the merciful love of the Father. So today we pray for and give thanks for the mercy Christ has and will bestow upon us. Now the standard defini definition of mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Now a king has the power to punish his subjects. A general has the power to punish his soldiers. A parent has the power to punish their children. But not only do they have the power to punish they also have the ability to show mercy. It is a judgment that must be fair. Now, when God is being merciful, it basically means that when we deserve punishment, <coughs> excuse me, he doesn't punish us. In fact, he blesses us instead. Some of you might say, then why do people suffer? First off, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say we were not to suffer. Our second reading from 1 Peter even says, you may have to suffer through various trials. Our hearts 
and attitudes at times need to be redirected through suffering so that the genuineness of our faith may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. God is all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful. God can bring good out of evil or suffering. God may allow us to suffer one thing to keep us from a greater suffering later. God may prevent us from achieving something we want because he knows that it would bring us greater physical or spiritual harm later if that something that we wanted was achieved. Sometimes God permits us to suffer the consequences of our behavior based on how we live or how we treat others. This suffering will bring about mercy only when we change our hearts and abide by God's way of life. And when we suffer, we become vulnerable and weak because we recognize that we are not in control. Mercy is given when we realize that we must have total dependence on God and submit to his will. Human suffering entered the world due to the effects of original sin. And instead of punishing us for our sin, God allowed his son to take the condemnation in our place, which is the ultimate act of God's mercy. Now from our second reading, God, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we who have been forgiven so much from the cross must follow God's example and show others the same mercy that we have received. Be merciful as God is merciful. And we read in our gospel from John that the disciples are locked in the upper room in fear when Jesus came and stood in their midst. Now these are the same disciples that denied and abandoned Jesus at his most crucial time. When they saw him appear, they were probably fearful of being punished. But instead, what did Jesus do? He said, Shalom, peace be with you. The risen Christ showed them mercy and forgave them. Even Thomas, who doubted what the others saw because he himself had not seen Jesus with his own eyes, was not punished but was forgiven. And not only did Jesus show mercy to his disciples, but he also gave them the Holy Spirit to be able to forgive or retain sins, to be able to give to others what they just received from Christ. Jesus gave them the power which has been handed down through the priesthood to this very day to grant divine mercy to those who suffer and need forgiveness. Now we have just begun celebrating the 50 days of Easter. And just because Lent is over and we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord doesn't mean that we stop or slow down our devotions of Christ. We must persevere in our efforts to hold on to our Lord and all that he wants from us. Even in our suffering, because he will come again. So let us pray that we are merciful and stay faithful to our devotion to the teachings of Christ and spread the good news to others 
of what is written of him, and that we may continue to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, we may have life in his name. Let us stand now and pray together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer up to God our prayers of petition. For church leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in the mission entrusted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, May the Holy Spirit inspire courage in acting on behalf of the most vulnerable, especially the elderly and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with faith, may God reveal himself to them and bring upon them his faithful presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. We pray, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they soon find peace and joy in God's loving presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Ed Stenger, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we gather on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we ask you to hear our prayers and to grant what we ask, for we pray in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory song is number 559. Easter Alleluia.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Hosanna, O Hosanna. O Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection. Today, we remember in a special way Ed Stanger, for whom this Mass is being offered, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand and pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reminder this afternoon at 3 o'clock here in the church, there will be a special Divine Mercy celebration. Also next Sunday is First Communion Sunday. Many of the children of our parish will be making their first Holy Communion during a special Mass at 12.30 next Sunday afternoon. Let's make sure that we keep all the children of our parish who are preparing for First Communion in our thoughts and prayers throughout this week. It has been a pleasure celebrating with all of you, and now may the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Our recessional is number 663, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. <laughs>